and just before the break, we're talking about losing yourself in the grief. And our guest is Coach Betty Mora. Please unpack that. Wow, that's just, that just hit me so hard. Please unpack that for us. All right. Thank you, Andrew, for that. So how that helped me is, um, you see, you could make a mistake in life as you try to monetize your potential, as you try to start a new business. Look at me. I was working for a big corporate. Everyone was proud of me, including people back in at home. Now you've resigned. No one has fired you. You have decided on, by your own volition, I'm leaving. Year one, you are struggling. The second year, you are struggling. You are probably bringing problems even at home because you were used to having an income. Now you're having to probably ask for support financially. You were supporting your parents and your siblings and your relatives. Now you can no longer support them. You are supporting in some projects. Now you cannot. You are able to afford your own little life happiness. You know, you could buy this kind of clothes if you wanted. You could take a trip if you wanted. You are driving a good car if you wanted. You could fuel any time if you wanted. Now you are not able to do all these things. When you go back to your own space, when you are alone and taking a shower, the guilt that hits you, even you, you agree with you. You agree with those voices in your head that you must be crazy. How could you? How could you leave a good job so that you can come and borrow money every other day? You keep begging banks. Eh? I remember begging banks. Please give me a loan so that I, you know, establish my business. And they look at your bank statement. They are not happy about it. And they tell you, don't grow there, grow, grow your account. And you're wondering, how do I grow my account? Without the money. Without the money. <laughs> so the guilt that eats a lot of professionals who live well-paying jobs, they were well-meaning. They didn't want to punish their spouses. They didn't want to punish their children. They knew beyond any shadow of doubt that their businesses would work. And now these businesses are not working. They are not getting paid. They are not earning. Nothing is working. And they don't know what happens next. Guilt will eat them. So I remember that that one really touched me. And I thought to myself, okay, you really don't have to die in the guilt. You can rise again. But she said, for you to rise again, you then need support. You need support. Because alone, today you'll be encouraged then tomorrow you'll go down and you don't have the luxury of time to keep going down, going up, going down. You need a strong support system that can tell you, we get you, we feel you. It, it, you burnt all the money, you got conned, you burnt all your pension. You know, there are people who retire and, and I've met them. They get their pension of three million. They put that in a matatu business. Because Andrew, my neighbor, when he retired, he started a matatu business and he's doing very well. He burned all that money in that business. Or they get, you know, you resign. You know when you resign, you get good packs eh, if you are working for a good company. And you realized you are doing very well like I was, where I was employed. So you come start same kind of business and you are telling yourself, I have the whole contact list of clients. I am the owner of the clients. Professionals come and tell me that. They tell me, you know, I was working in the loan section. I approved all their loans. I am going to start my own circle. They will come running. My friend. Or I have media friends. And sometimes we, have, we talk with them and they tell me, I will leave this job. And I will start my own podcast like Andrew. And you know, I know all the politicians, all the CEOs. I, they are the back and call of my, they are here. When we have a good laugh, I will always tell them, before you do that, I don't discourage them. But I'll tell them, before you do that, 
let's have a talk. Because I know how that story ends. The moment you leave that job, they also don't pick your calls. They were picking your calls because of the big job that you had. They were picking their calls, not because of you. <laughs> they were picking those calls because of themselves. And that's one of the biggest lessons that I learned from Michael Joseph when, when I was in Safaricom. He said, the client does not care about us as a company. He does not care about our beautiful products. He cares about what is that phone call going to do for me? What is this product you're selling going to do for me? So professionals leave thinking, I have contacts. I am a CEO. I'm a big shot. I'm the head of marketing. When I leave and start my business, they will break their legs coming. Lie, big one. So you need support. And what support helped you mm. shift from where you are to be the person who was able to make money from your expertise? Thank you, Andrew. I must say that the support that shifted things for me was first of all coaching. Uh, I did coaching. I did, I got myself, the, after I realized this coaching, you know, Coach Irene made me realize this coaching. So I finished with her program, looked for another coach, finished with their program, looked for another coach, finished with their programs because I wanted the process to be seamless. I wanted to be very sure that this time when I go to the market, I will launch better. So I meet this other coach who tells me, okay, Betty, what do you want to do? You are knowledgeable. I can tell. I read a lot, by the way, Andrew. I read a lot. I have always been interested in reading, in watching useful things. I have good information in my head. But he asked me, how do you get paid for that information? What is preventing you from getting paid? And the answer was, your knowledge is not packaged. Your knowledge is not harnessed. Your experience at Safaricom is all over the place. We just know you worked there. <laughs> Beyond that, we really don't care, by the way, about you, Betty. We, we, we have our own problems. So, And that is one problem I see with new professionals. They think by putting one post on LinkedIn, they write a good post on LinkedIn. And then they think all of us are falling over ourselves trying to understand that post. We don't care. As long as we read and we don't see where we are coming in, we could get entertained by the good grammar, the good photos. But as long as it's not touching my pain, I will not reach my wallet. And in marketing, I tell people, I tell professionals who, are, who want to mon get paid for their knowledge, the question you are waiting for is, how do I pay you? Do you deliver? Where are your lessons? Where are your services? How do I get into your circles? That is the question you want to hear. You don't want people saying, oh, thank you very much for sharing. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, you are so useful. That does not put money in the bank for you. Praises, likes, comments, and loves on social media, that does not equate to money. Money is what is in your account. And promises of Oh, that was a very good post. I'll look for you. They will not look for you. You have not convinced them to look for you with that one post. So what moved, from, what moved it for me was getting someone who told me we must sit down and put this knowledge in a viable format. You must be able to show people this is what I'm made of. And you must be able to capture their attention to get interested in what you are offering. So I sat down with him and we put up a program and I, my, my coaching program, my signature coaching program was born. It's called the Activate and Monetize Your Potential Program because I wanted to show other professionals what, what wrong we do. I wanted to, them to avoid the pain that I had gone through 
I lost all my money by the way. All the handshake I got after my job. I lost it trying to look good, trying to move from one networking event to the other. Then I discovered these networking events they don't most of them don't even work because it Andrew who is new in business, he has a new business card giving Betty who is new in business a new business card. How are you helping each other? So I discovered no, this is not the way you do things. You go to the person who's been there, done that, and printed t-shirts as receipts. So I went to that guy and he showed me. And I wanted to do that for any other person who knew me and they didn't have to go through the pain that I had gone through. It became very successful, the program. So people sought me out that activate and monetize your potential. How? I want to know. I have potential. I want to activate it. Some wanted to activate, some wanted to monetize, some wanted both. Oh, so there's a, there's a difference. Yes, there's a difference. Activating means you actually didn't know that that potential you carry could could be made, could come alive. There are people who actually die with their potential. They were to be exceptional coaches. They never started that coaching program. They were to be exceptional footballers. No one brought out the urge to activate it, to make it alive, to bring it out. So there's that. There are people who just wanted to activate and they fear the word monetize because Africans don't like to talk about the money yet. Everybody wakes up in the morning to go look for the money. So they want to be humble and avoid the word money. So they just want to activate. Then later in life, they will sneak in and try to see how to monetize. But there are those bold ones who came and told me, Betty, I have potential. I just don't know what to do with it. How do I bring it into life? And how do I get paid for it? So that's, that's how coaching assisted me. Because someone had helped me. Someone asked me hard questions. I remember that coach asking me, the first day we met, you told me you'll write a book. What chapter are you doing now? I said, none. He said, you're going to start writing that book today. And because of that accountability, I will not call it pressure. I'll call it accountability. I actually sat down to write a book and my book was born. I became an author. That gave me more credibility. What's the name of the book? Activate and, what did you write about? and monetize your potential is my book. <laughs> it's my signature. That's my signature program. Hmm. So it has coaching programs. It has a book. It has online courses. It has virtual classes. It has physical events. All of them called Activate and Monetize Your Potential. But now under Activate and Monetize Your Potential, popularly known as AMP out there, we have different products like, you know, how to get paid for your knowledge, digital products, cash out, how you can create digital products and then you cash them out. You know, we have physical, we have executive coaching and IMP. Mm. So that became my signature coaching program. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Would you just mind just sharing maybe a couple of stories of people who've gone through your process and how their lives were changed, how they were able to monetize their expertise? Uh, Andrew, that, that I've had. The other day I was going through my, my, my work mm -hmm. and I realized I've mentored over, um, I think online I've mentored more than 10,000 people. Most don't tell me. <laughs> Most don't tell me. Wow. They only tell me when they bump into me and they tell me, are you Coach Betty? And I say, yeah, I'm Coach Betty. There's something you posted on your page. And I went that day and started a business with what I had. I want to thank you very much because I earn from that business. And as they tell me, I wake up every day, I go to your page, I don't start my day without reading what it is that you have posted. There are many like that. But there are those who have also been gracious enough to come. I won't say gracious enough. Let me let me withdraw that. There are those who have been interested to come and pay for coaching. Maybe I've not convinced those ones who haven't come properly. But there are those who have come, actually paid for coaching, 
and their stories have transformed and their mm. lives have transformed there are many many but i yeah, want to sure, yeah. i want to let me say two or three yes, yes. i'll start with a gentleman because i i like it when gentlemen come to tell me what do i do betty so this gentleman is very cool calm and collected and quiet he's an accountant by profession he's an accountant by skill what he went to school for is accounting so by skill he's an accountant so he gets employed as a junior accountant worked as a junior accountant he went through the ranks he got promotions and as he went through the ranks he they also kept adding to his roles today is a senior accountant then tomorrow there is a new role of procurement then there is another role and then another role and at some point he wondered what do i do in this company who who have i become i'm not even clear of what i do and he also felt dissatisfied by the remuneration versus the amount of effort it wasn't balancing so he told me it's taking me too much time effort and energy and i'm still not reaching my life goals because we have various life goals as we grow and in our 20s probably our goals are not as 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 clear but when a gentleman in his 40s comes and tells you i'm not progressing well i wanted to be here by this time i'm way below and i don't know where to start so he gave me his story i listened to him and i look at him i'm also a certif i i i do personality profiling so i could tell this is not the client that we talk about him resigning and by the way it is not a must for all of us to resign and to start businesses you don't have to leave your job to go and start a business you can start a business on the side in fact you still don't have to go and start a business you can work on your skills and rise in your career a rising career means a rise in your income so there are those people who will do in career they will be employed and that's okay i also don't like people who demonize being employed my employment at the greenhouse is what funded my dreams to be a a, a business person stop working for the man no, you're building no. somebody else's dream i think that is uh, <laughs> horrible advice because if all of us left you know to start businesses who would buy from us i think is also doesn't consider that advice comes from people who are not experts because it doesn't consider the person who doesn't have the the desire to go out and do a business you don't have to do that so what what i advise that gentleman because i could tell he loves his job he's just not clear what he's doing so we looked at different ways of the environment the context in which he was working some companies when you you become you add more skills you'll be promoted and you get more money but some companies are not like that and the policies are not like that and you cannot come and I'm twist people to give you more money because you have a new degree or new master's degree or new phd no or they have given you too many roles there are company procedures and policies and things run different so the best option was for him to start something on the side as a side people call them side hustles i don't like that word because you treat it as a side hustle it pays you as a side hustle so we just decided to start something on the side a business on the side his next objection was but coach betty i don't like to be loud on social media and i can't want to be seen to be doing other things on social media i tell him that's not a problem you can still be on social media and you will not be seen to be doing things on social media there are many strategies to you so long story short he's we 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 brainstorm and we go through my four steps to getting paid for the knowledge in your head there are four steps so we go through the four steps and he finally he decides to start um a business to help startups do bookkeeping properly his biggest fear was coach betty 
this is so basic. Who doesn't know how to do bookkeeping? And I gave him my story and I asked him, yourself, can you fly a plane? He said, no, I can't fly a plane. I asked him, what, what do you think is involved in flying a plane? He said, you have to go to school for so many years. You have to do this and that. And I asked him, do you think it's easy to fly a plane? And he says, no, it's difficult to fly a plane. And I told him, if you spoke to a pilot who's done it for 10 years or 15 years, they will answer as you have answered me. It's so easy. Who will pay me? It's so easy. Doing this thing is so easy. So that was to tell him it comes as hard bookkeeping comes as hard to someone else as piloting comes as hard to you. So there's someone waiting to pay you. You show them how to do bookkeeping, but you have nothing. You have not told them you can show them. You have nothing to show. They don't know how much you charge. They don't even know you exist. So you need to go out there and find who they are. So our gentleman today, the last we spoke, his side business is doing, of course, he at some point he brought in the wife because he, she wasn't busy. And I think they've run it very well. So now it's earning him twice the amount of money his salary is paying. Wow. Our next discussion is, which bit can I leave? So that's where we are. That we are, we are having that discussion. It's a long one. We have to be careful about it because this is a man. I also tell men and women, most times our experiences are different. The, you are the man. You will need to be the breadwinner of your family. So probably me leaving Safaricom might have been easier because I might have someone I'll tell pay school fees. Where will you be a nanny? Who will you take the pay school? So we are having that discussion. I like to be sober and I like to be practical, not to mislead professionals to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. We cannot rush to tell everybody to go make money, go make a fortune without being thoughtful. So we're having that discussion. So that's the gentleman. Well, we, I guess I guess you can call him able the accountant. <laughs> yeah, let's, you've abled him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's an able accountant. Let, let's just give him a name, Andrew, because we <laughs> want to protect his um, identity. Let me talk about, I, I, I want to talk about another gentleman. I'm, I'm yeah. sorry, ladies, you as is coming. So this other <laughs> gentleman encounters me in a training. Mm -hmm. He's a doctor. So I'm training doctors on customer service. You've done the doctor. Yeah. So they are <laughs> doctors and nurses and hospital staff. So we talk about customer service. But because I'm a trained, I'm a trainer who is a coach. <laughs> so I find myself using both as I train. So the coaching side of me comes up as I train. And I talk about our different abilities. So after class, he looks for me. He doesn't look for me then. He looks for me two years after that class. I'm actually shocked when he introduces himself because I can't remember him very well. And he said, you trained me in such and such a place. Something has come up. I can't continue doing that job. I am a doctor. I do not know where to start. So we sit down, we have a discussion. And the discussion is, does he go look for a job? or he wants to start his own clinic. He's very clear, I don't want to be employed again. So this one wasn't, it wasn't a big problem. So we sit down and we do our four steps. Our four steps, we have to go through them. So once we do that, he, he leaves Nairobi, goes to another county, and you know, it, it, we, we looked at it, we looked at it because I tell you, I take care of gentlemen because it's heavier for them. And there was a recommendation that I brought on the table. And he lives to another county. He becomes so big because there's no hospital. There's no doctor where he's going to set up a, a clinic. It stops being a clinic. He starts, you know, building it into a hospital. He gets into bigger coaching. That's the good thing with coaching. You start with a client. You start them at the lower level. Uh, when you support them properly and you encourage them and you give them structured support and accountability, they will want to ask you, Coach Betty, I'm here now. Which other level can I get to? So we move to the next level of coaching. 
and we moved to the next level and to the next level. So we got to the executive coaching level where I suggested at this level, I would like you to enroll for this and that, this class at Strathmore University. And I would also suggest that you look for collaboration because here going it alone would be a misstep. He's, he, he listens. And so now as we speak, let me just say, I am so grateful that we started that journey. It's a journey of transformation that I also look and wonder, wow, we were able to achieve this. This, this is amazing. Those are gentlemen. So what did he say the transformation for him was? Outside of achieving, uh, moving from employment to having his clinic, and now you said it's progressing to become even larger, like a hospital in, uh, in, in the county that he's in. What other transformations have you seen in him? Uh, Andrew, as we were starting, I don't know if I remembered to tell you that I have the gift of insight. And what bothers me is seeing people living way below their potential. Long before I became a proper coach, I would get offended that you're not activating your potential. What are you doing? I would become offended because I thought, why are you not seeing it? Then I realized you don't see it because... You are not me. You are not me. Mm. I am creative. I have the gift of insight. And also I think I've been enabled to enable others. Yes, to be fair, you know, you've, you've, you've had a father that affirmed you. You told you could have achieved me, anything. Affirmed me, shown me, exactly. You worked at Safaricom. Yeah. You, you got a very serious uh, training and, coaching and exposure. And yes. exposure. So I saw that when we were having our very first discussion, when he told me his story, I saw that in him. I, I, I got it from our discussion. I could pick it. And so he said, one sentence that changed his life is because I told him, in the medical field that you are in and in your area of spe specialization, there are endless possibilities. That changed everything for him, assuring him that there are endless possibilities and he can be the carrier of those possibilities and that it is possible for him to actually pick this knowledge that he has gained over the years as a doctor and package it into a hospital or a clinic and now start selling services was so liberating for him. And he kept asking me, sure, me, Coach Betty, I said, yes, you, because this, 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 and you have the desire to start your own business. I would also say that working with him, you know, through coaching really helped because he kept checking with me, checking with me. And we also sought, I told him to go look for support from other people from his community who had done the same and became successful. Wow, wow. Yeah instilling the possibility yeah yes and so uh yes uh, you know in kenya we have to apply the two-thirds gender rule <laughs> yeah exactly exactly i wanted to tell you we have forgotten the ladies mm, yes uh the, of course the reason why we end with the ladies is because the ladies have been more than the gentlemen maybe the ladies bring back more feedback mm. than the gentlemen do but the most recent is uh graduate teacher she has a degree she went to school to learn how to teach grown-ups you know as guys mm. who did the the BA, the bachelor of education the most best thing we learned in campus is how to teach grown-ups so i guess we can call her tabitha the teacher you know we can call her <laughs> we can we can call her let me call her doris okay. yeah doris so doris went to school to do to 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 be a teacher like she took the education degree and so she went to class to teach she just the obvious things one time she i don't know how she bumped into me on social media but she started following me then i ran a class a virtual class monthly classes that i call a round table with coach betty so that month we were doing a round table and we were looking at how do we turn our knowledge into money. In fact, it was called knowledge into money, 
round table. So using the four steps in three days of training, uh, the evenings, because it's a virtual class, we would do it every day, 7.30 to 9 for three days. We took the steps and what changed for her was realizing that she has all this knowledge. She's been going to schools. I think she was busy almost every other weekend going to speak to girls about different life issues. And she told me what was most hurtful is the envelope she would get after talking for so long. And the envelope would have something small for her fuel back home. And I asked her, that's okay. I mean, you can give back to the girls. What's the problem of giving back to the girls? And she said, I will get to the age where I give back or I will get to the stage in life where I can give back. But I, first of all, I have to meet my own needs. So I asked her, what's your frustration? And she said, these people don't like to pay me. They earn a lot of money. They're international schools. And I asked her, but the client, you've not shown the client how to pay you. Where is your packaged knowledge? Your knowledge is all over. It is haphazard. You dish it out like confetti. Oh, we'll take you seriously. Nobody will. So she leaves that particular virtual class and gets into the proper EMP program, like the program where we, we take the four steps. Now, in depth, you do worksheets, you do practical work. She packages her knowledge and she disappears. The other day, I see a long text from her, and she says, Coach Betty, I now have my own program. I go to school like an organized person. I get called to more schools than I was being called. Now they respect me. They know the name of my program. They know how much I charge. They know who I target. They take me more serious. And I, I have my own terms and conditions. I have my pricing. So if you get to the, I mean, if you are able to pay, well and good. If not, you wait for the day I'll be doing CSR and I'll come to your school. So she was so glad. The sentence that made me remember that lady today, is because she said, Coach Betty, I am because you decided to share the knowledge that you have. Otherwise, I would still be struggling. I would still be giving my knowledge for free. I would still be getting paid, you know, I would still be getting peanuts for my knowledge because I didn't know it's something that can pay me. So I didn't take it serious. I didn't work on it and I didn't focus on growing it into a business or into a profitable venture. Please let me give one more lady so that the ladies don't feel like uh, <laughs> I, I'm not on their side and yet I'm a lady. Sure. There's this one who was a CEO of a big company. She comes across my advert. I also run adverts on Facebook. So targeted adverts. So she comes across that advert. Mm, I guess you can call her Catherine the CEO. Yeah, Catherine <laughs> the CEO comes across um, my advert and she decides to, to, to engage. So in that advert, when you click the link, it, it was taking you to a webinar, a whole class, free one. So she engages in my webinar and as she listens, she later she told me, I kept wondering, Kwani Betty knows me. This is me she's describing in this webinar. Did you know me? I said, no, I didn't know you. But I have a way of knowing your problems because I've been a professional. And of course, I have coaches who do teach me the latest, best marketing methods. So we interact. She buys my online coaching program. And from there, it was a role for her. She discovered something so pristine, like, you mean this knowledge I've been gaining in the, where I work? She worked for an NGO, a big NGO. You mean this knowledge can be monitored? It's monetizable? So she gets into that program. She finishes that and tells me, Coach Betty, bring the next coaching program. I mean, she gets into that one. Give me the next one. As we speak, I am so proud to say that now she is also a coach who has her own coaching program that is dealing with finances. And I'm so glad. 
to see that kind of transformation happening to my clients. Like from raw to something. You know, I like to call them before and after. <laughs> yeah, and those those are some of the testimonials. I re- I think I receive a testimonial on a daily basis. Wow. Either on Facebook, on TikTok, or message, or WhatsApp. Or people just looking for me physically and telling me, thank you. Thank you. Wow. Thank you that you obeyed your call. It's a difficult call, Andrew. To tell grown-ups adults people who have been earning some in millions to try and tell them this can be useful it is difficult it is very very difficult it is even difficult to try and show them do you know that you can actually make use of this knowledge and do you know you can actually create something can we create together it's difficult I don't say it's easy, it's difficult, but I do it. Why do I do it? Because I remember the transformation that happened to someone else. I remember the transformation that happened to someone else. I look at my own transformation and I and I think this could happen to someone else too. I also learned some a good marketing skill from one of my business coaches. And he said, Betty, you put out your information, put out your offer. Those who are for it will know it. The sheep know there. The sheep know. Yeah, they are lead. Yeah, they know. Just put it out there. A lot of professionals are also failing because of fear of judgment. They fear being. You know, professionals used to work for a big company like mm. us. Used to work for a bank. You worked with the police. You worked as a big principal somewhere. You worked for government, big office. Then you fear people seeing you on social media saying, come and buy my things. <laughs> that fear is real in professionals. They ask me, I used to have a big corner office. Now those people who are reporting to me are going to see me advertising. And I say to them, that that's a fear and it's valid. But they are First of all, there are many ways to kill, you know, there are many ways to start so that you don't feel too uncomfortable. Mm. But with time, if your product can transform, I'm telling you, people are going to be tagging you. You want to run away from the calling, but people will tag you into that calling. And if it can transform one life, why not? Wow, and as we talk about transforming, yes, let's take a break. And then when we come back from the break, I'd love you just to share that four-step method and how we can be able to access this transformation. Okay. My name is Coach Betty, and you are listening or watching the Revenge of the Forsaken Gods podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Keep listening for more inspirational stories. Welcome back to the Revenge of the Forsaken Gods. I'm your host, Andrew Balongo Pere. And before the break, Coach Betty Morrow was just sharing with us a few stories of transformation of some of the clients she's helped out. And right now, I'd like her just to, you know, just briefly share with us her four-step process that she guides her clients through in order to have the transformation that they are seeking. Yes, Coach Betty. Wow, wow I'm so excited, you know. Yeah, so t- yes, do share the, the four-step process. Right, I will uh, mention the four steps and uh, we can unpack them another time. So the first step is what we call clarifying the idea or clarifying your monetizable knowledge. Mostly, professionals have gained so much knowledge. In the 10 years you've been a doctor, You've gained so much knowledge, knowledge how to deal with people, how to deal with clients, how to conflict management you have dealt. You've gained um, medical knowledge. You've written papers. Let's imagine you are a university don. You teach at the university. In 10 years or 15 years, you've gained so much knowledge. You probably have been a dean. You probably have taught uh, PhD students, master's students. There's so much you've learned in those 10 years. You could be confused. Or let's say you're in media. In 15 years, 
there's nothing you haven't learned, including digital knowledge. You've learned many, many things, how to deal with people, how to create stories. But when you come to the market, you can't implement all those ideas at once. And that is where most professionals go wrong. They tell me I have very many ideas and I love all of them. So I want to do this as I do this and I trust and, and as I do this. And that becomes a big problem. So step number one is to first of all be crystal clear which knowledge, which skill, or which area of expertise are we going to start with? Where are we starting? What is it you're monetizing? You have to be clear. Otherwise, you go to the market and you lose all your time and energy and money trying to communicate something that is not clear. So you are talking to everybody. And if you are talking to everyone, you are talking to no one. We are trying to do everything. You are in car wash business. Okay, let's say you are, you are in uh, the financial industry. So you sold loans. You were in credit, you managed client relations, so you decide to start a business on the side. So you are a trainer in customer service because you did very well in the bank. You're also selling uh, credit, you had some money, so you are, you know, lending money somewhere. You are trying to help people with bookkeeping. You are doing credit, you are doing ABCD. You will fail for sure. It's a matter of when <laughs> you are going to fail. So we start by clarifying which knowledge, which skill, which area of expertise are we focusing on? Number two, structuring that knowledge. Actually, that module two is where things are, is where the weight is. How do you structure your knowledge? Now you've decided, we have picked the area we want to focus on. How do you package that? How do you product size or product size? this knowledge or packaging it how do you mm -hmm. package it how do you make it make sense to this client that you are targeting that's your job it is not his job i see people asking and by the way what do you do i know you do team building what else do you do because you're not clear about what you do and you've not packaged it properly number three step I know most people don't like this step, but it's a very important step. Is identifying who is your ideal client. Ideal, I mean, who is your perfect client. That client that you will gel, that client that will pay you on time and pay you well, but also that client that will take your advice and go implement it so that tomorrow they can have a testimonial for you and they can have they can be your brand ambassadors some people rush to pick any client because they need the money so anyone who asks for a discount they give them a discount and they take them in then those clients end up becoming a pain in your neck because they weren't your ideal clients they didn't like your service neither did they like you so they will not do the work after they don't do the work they will not find results then they are going to go around saying, Coach John's services are work. He's a scam and he scammed us. He's a nobody and he stole my money. You did that. You, you, you are the one who attracted that kind of a client. You need to be very careful who you are bringing on board. You have to filter them. You have to use the right techniques to get in the right clients so that you build your business steadily. The last step is pricing. Most professionals, and I had that problem, they leave work where things were working. I mean, I worked in a big organization. I don't know who used to bring in the water. I do not know how my seat was bought. I do not know how much it costs for them to pay the taxes. I really don't know how much it cost to do business. I just knew there was my salary and my job to do. So most professionals leave work. They don't know how all those parts were moving 
for the business to make sense. So you find yourself here, you have a business. You need water, you need a pen, you need a seat, you need a table, you need an office, you need a, someone to do your reports. And all of a sudden, all those roles, you have to play them. Then you realize you have clients who need your services. You do not know how much to charge them. You don't know who to benchmark with. You do not know how to price that product. I mean, how to price that service. Because in the service industry, it is not regulated. If you are selling this phone, Andrew, this is an S22. This is the price of ST22. There won't be too much difference between vendors. There is the basic price it can go for and there is the maximum price it can go for. But for service, I once put up um, a post on Facebook and it really attracted debate because I learned there is an MC, a wedding MC, who charges 15000 on a Saturday to MC a wedding and there is an MC in the same industry, same language, same region, who charges 300,000 Kenya shillings to MC your wedding. And I asked, what are they doing differently? So you will realize, actually, let me use that analogy, because it's true. And people who are in that community, they know it is true. You will find this new MC comes to the industry. He doesn't know how much to charge for his services. And he doesn't know why people charge the much money they charge. So how does he come up with his prices? He looks around, finds other MCs. Because he wants to undercut you so that your client can find him, he calls for half. He says, Betty charges this much. I am going to charge half. You, you wait. You will see how many clients I'll have. You will only find two or three. Then they actually find your services are not as attractive as they thought and they drop you and that's the end of you. So how as a service provider do you come up with your services? There's a science, there's a technique, there's a nut to that. So that's usually the module number four. Lately, after doing a lot of research and experimenting, not experimenting, doing a lot of research and listening to my clients, and doing it practically, I've introduced two more steps. But those two more steps, we shall reveal them in an event. Okay, okay. Yes. So uh, before we, uh, we close off, I like playing a small game of, of, of the game of threes. So currently, who are three people who have influenced your life? I know you mentioned Irene, you mentioned Lisa Nichols. Um, but who are three people who have influenced your coaching life or even your life to where it is now that without their input you'd not be the kind of individual you are uh, I would have loved to mention you know Coach Irene and my dad and Lisa and all that but because I've mentioned them a lot let me add three more but there are many people who have influenced my life. Exactly. Some physically, some I meet them through their books and their work. Uh, but I must not forget to mention that. Um, Let's start with the physical ones. The physical ones? Yes. The physical ones, um, I must repeat. Because I think the person who has influenced my life the most is my dad. By just creating that power in me that my daughter in fact I remember him once telling me I was six or seven years old and my mom was sending me to the shop and something happened and he said listen mom there is always money to do what you want to do money is in the pocket of people <laughs> I don't know how to put that in proper language money is somewhere people Carry money in their pockets. Find a way of getting that money and do not steal. Just figure out how to creatively get that money, but there's always money. And let no one ever tell you there's no money. There's always money. Otherwise, there won't be new buildings coming up and people won't be driving bigger cars and better clothes. So that, that, that was really impactful for me. 
The other person who has impacted my life greatly is um, Grant Cardone. I, I, I just landed upon Grant because of Kinalisa and all that. And that guy changed my life 100% by teaching me if I don't sell my business, I will be sold. He has written a book called Sell or Be Sold. I read that book. It revolutionized everything I do. By the time I was getting to buy his courses and all that and all that, I had already changed my mindset that if I don't become the chief marketing officer of my business, I shall suffer and I shall close down. So either you sell or you'll be sold and close and go home. I must also not forget to mention my business coach. My business coach is called Coach CK. Coach CK is tough. <laughs> he has put me on my toes. But the most important thing Coach has done for me is putting me on global platforms to speak. Every time he has an event on a global platform, he says, Betty, come down. There's an event in this and this place. I'm giving you a ticket. I mean, he's my coach and I pay for coaching, but most times he gives me a free ticket. Just come. I won't charge you for coaching. Pay your flight, pay your whatever. Show up here. And he puts me on difficult stages. He gives me confidence. He puts me in stages where there are news, I mean, there are media interviewing people. I don't know who they are. They are white. I'm scared. Like, yeah, go ahead and you want to be influential, share the stage with me, say what you want to say, grow. So, I must say that coach has been very, very influential and he has also taught me the power of um, not giving up, not giving up, and hard work. I remember one time we went for a coaching session, um, conference, it was a conference, and after our class in the evening, he says. By tomorrow morning, by the time you come to this class, you will have read a book. You will have read one whole book. I don't care if you spend the whole night reading or you want to go listen to the, what, what are they? Audio book. Audio book. But give me notes and tell me what was happening in that book. That woke me up. And I remember saying, um, coach, that's impossible. We've been in class the whole day. We are tired. And he says, yeah, Betty, you know, if I promised you a million Kenya shillings tomorrow morning to read that book, you will read it. So go read it. After reading that book, I am very sure you'll make a million bob because of the knowledge that it will give you. So he has really impacted my life. I must say that. Yeah. Okay, those are three physical. Mm. Um, three books. Three books. I've read so many books, but let me go back to... And now I'm, I'm starting to diverge important information about the two extra steps. Someone who is uh, attentive, they can pick this. The other book that influenced, the book that influenced my, my life the most, there are many. But there's a book called um, Financial Conscient by Robert Kiyosaki. I remember reading that book when this country was in a, in an, in a camp are we doing campaigns or we had just elected? You know that cycle we usually get into? We are campaigning for three years and then when we get, we, we, we elect, then we go to court, then the next one year we are wasting time and a lot of service-based businesses mm. go down. They either go down or they go broke and there's no cash flow. We were in such a time and I was thinking, what do I do? There's no money. There are no training opportunities. People are not getting out their money to train. When I read that book, Kiyosaki was teaching the power of marketing your business. And I remember him saying, whatever happens in your nation, whether it's an economic crisis, there is collapse of anything, whatever happens, never ever cut down on the cost of marketing. When there's a crisis, Double your marketing efforts. When the economy is crumbling, triple your marketing efforts. That is how he grew. Mm -hmm. He said the moment you cut down your marketing budget, 
you kill your business. So he said, cut down anything else. If you want to cut out the teas, the newspapers, the coffees, the allowances, very good. Triple your marketing budget. I tried it. And my business experienced a transformation that also changed my mindset about election time. I thought to myself, I've practiced what he has said. I've gotten big business in the midst of chaos. So it's actually not true that there's no business during during a crisis, it's that we don't put enough effort to show what we do for clients. We don't. We don't. Wow. wow. Oh, that's that one book by Robert Kiyosaki. The other book that changed my life is called Never It Alone by Keith Ferrazzi. Keith Ferrazzi. And I learned the power of networking, the power of just Speed networking. You don't have all the time to network with that CEO who is in the lift. And all the amount of money you need, all the good life you need, all the connections you need, they are within your circle. If you know how to eat with others, and I don't mean eating in our Kenyan context. <laughs> I mean eating food, eating opportunities, eating whatever it is with others. You are likely not to to suffer. You are likely not to suffer. The other book that has impacted my life greatly, I read it when I was in first year of campus. This 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 is a young kissy man who wanted to be my friend, and he told me he he would come to look for me in my room, and he asked me, ah, what kind of a boyfriend would you like? I said the one who brings me many flowers. And I remember <laughs> him saying, no, that's, that's not a good boyfriend. And he left. The next time he came, he, he came singing a song, which I had never heard. He, he came singing a reggae song that says, I'm not the kind of guy who brings you flowers every day. I thought, really? But he had a book. And that book changed my life. He bought me a book called How to Win Friends and influence people. And he made me read it. I didn't want to talk to him even, but he made me read that book. I read it, I was like, oh, oh wow, this makes sense. He brought another one, tough, tough, tough seasons never last. Tough times tough don't times last. Tough times don't last, but tough people do. The power of influence. He brought a couple of books. I'm sorry, it never went that way. But he also really got me into the culture of reading. In the university. So that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, has opened many doors for me. And I buy that book to each and every of my niece who steps in Form 1. For me, I buy them in Form 1. My niece, my nephews, my cousins, as long as you're younger than me, you step in Form 1, I'm bringing you that book. Why is that book so powerful? Because it's, it's like never it alone. It's, it opens doors for you. A lot of times, Andrew, we think it's in working so hard. It is in toiling and moiling that we get what we want. Well, most times, it's actually how you treat those who you live with. It's actually how you, you make others feel about themselves and about the experience that they had with you. A lot of opportunities. When I used to work for Safaricom, I used to see people thinking that your boss is your enemy. Even probably I was in that list before I knew better. But that boss that you're looking down upon could be the person that opens the next big door for you. That watchman that you hoot at like that, he knows so many things that could go wrong in your life. But he can never voice it because you are too proud. That what that 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 watchman that is in the bank, he could be he could open a door for you, but you are too up there to have a relationship with him. That uncle of yours that you think is a drunkard, have you ever sat with him to try and find out a little information about your family? about your family tree, about your line. Do you think there's something that he knows that you don't? 
the giftings, whatever we need in this life is in the people that we live with. I, I talk to cab guys. Once, once in a while I take cabs. I, I like taking cabs so that I can read. That is my greatest motivation. So that I can read as the guy drives. I, 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 the ones that I'm able to make friendships with, I tell them, do you know? How many people do you carry here every day? And he'll say 15, 10, depending with the day. I tell him, here, you carry a lot of blessings every day. You carry your next big job here every day. Probably you never just seem to know it. But because you think it's a client, it's a customer in here taking where he's going, you never take time to focus your energy and to be present for this client. You know, you never take time to say, hi, good morning. Are you comfortable? Is your belt working? And the few I've talked to, they've tried the they've tried the trick. It has worked so well for them. Either they get a customer who is very well off and has been looking for someone to drop his kids to school every morning and in the evening, and there's a permanent job for him. Or they get someone who is the HR in a company and they are looking for a company driver or a company this and that. There are people who are driving these these Ubers, as we call them. They are graduates, they have papers, they are frustrated. But every day you are carrying CEOs there. You've never read how to influence and influence people. You have not read Never Eat Alone. So that you can know how do I interact with this person that I'm, maybe this is my boss. Maybe this is the person who helps me get to buy another 10 taxis. Maybe if he likes my behavior, he has money to invest in me because I'm available to run this business and he can buy 10 cabs and we run this business together. So the power of the people that you meet every day, wow. the obvious ones, you think they are obvious, <laughs> but I don't think they are obvious. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Learning the um, power of relationships. The power of relationships. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Share three movies that you're currently watching or series. Or that have influenced your life? I'm not a very movie person. Actually, I'm not a TV person a lot. Okay. But I, I would say the, the, the movie that other people's money, I know it's not a good title, but it really helped me. Oh, other people's money. Yes, okay. yes, other people's money. There's a series that uh, was called Infrastructure. How Dubai was built. Mm. I watched it maybe five... When I was starting my business, when my business was very shaky, I watched that series, How Dubai Was Built, and it inspired me. It's the only thing that I... I, I don't watch too much of news and those things. I, I like to read instead. But when I, I went... It was called Super Structures or Structures, something like that. It really inspired me. I thought... These guys are doing what my dad said. They are building from nothing. Literally from a desert to the skyscrapers that are now in Dubai. So they, they showed that whole series. The works, the employment, the people who migrated to Dubai just to go and build. They were having a new source of income. You know, the works, the, all that. It really inspired me and I thought to myself, you see, we just don't open our minds enough to create. We think that for us to go to the next level, we have to use what someone else has created. And I always tell people who have some knowledge, stop looking at coaches, stop looking at what others have done. You can create your own thing and start selling it. You don't have to. It's better, it's easier to come and reinvent I mean, not reinvent the wheel. It's better to come and benchmark maybe and improve a few things. But you can also create. And one of the things I teach people how to create is something we call daily bank alerts. I'm a daily money alert. How do you create daily money alerts? What are they? Daily money alerts. I don't know how it makes you feel, Andrew, when your phone, you know, it's, it's a text message that goes today. Then when you check, it's an 
pesa message <laughs> or your salary has hit the account or that contractor has paid you your dues or the client has paid for coaching fee how does that make you feel it feels great every time you receive an alert every time you see an alert from the bank that there's new money in your account how does that make you feel no it feels awesome amazing yes right would you like that to happen to you every single day oh yes how would that make you feel ecstatic ecstatic <laughs> now i want to tell you that it is possible it's what we teach people how to do especially through what we call the digital products mm. like an online course i have online courses which give me daily bank alerts daily you sitting doing this podcast then there's someone in nigeria who has seen an advert they've liked your class now they have bought your course so on my way home i have 5000 kenya shillings 30000 kenya shillings it feels amazing daily money alerts they, i think they are the sweetest yeah so you you create you can create that source of income for yourself it wasn't there yes but you can create it nobody stops you so mega structures wow. it was mega mega structures, structures. Yes, wow. yes, okay. mega structures and you reminded me of something which I'll come back to yeah uh, but let's finish off three mm. songs or artists you're <laughs> listening to or songs that have always lifted your spirits up or guided you during tough times mm-hmm. you can choose any ah uh, three songs and artists who sing them i can sing them No, mm. three songs mm-hmm. and the artists that sing oh, them. Oh, and the artists mm. that sang them. I think my favorite African artists on the side of gospel is uh, Sinach. I marvel at how she sits down to come up with such well composed moving songs that speak a lot of sense it's like she really reads she really reads the words in the bible with a pen and a paper like they go down like she allows them to to sink i i i appreciate how she writes her music i i really love it um locally specific songs that you know i think for me one that spoke to me when i was in um, my, my life you know we all go through hard times eh mm. no 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 i shouldn't say that let me withdraw that when I, during my very difficult time at one point in my life you are running a business you also having family things going on i was at a very very bad space and there is nothing that was going to convince me that this is no more that what do you mean how are these things happening like this you know and i remember wondering that god that they tell me about why 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 is he what's going on what's going on and only one word from sinach changed my life she said that god is a way maker They don't it's not a must there be a way because at that point there was no way for me like there was she said he's a way maker he'll make you don't see it you believe he's a way maker i didn't even go past the way i was like okay he can actually create a way i don't have to see it i don't have to have known it from before this situation he will make a way in his own way the way he helps me to create things from nothing i think he'll make a way for me and, and that really encouraged me that time it made me listen to that song with a new revelation but i'll be very honest to say i i just like that bit of way maker way maker because he, he makes a way and for those who never heard the song what's the name of the song i don't know i just know it's called way maker mm. <laughs> miracle mm. work well, i don't know what mm. it is i called. know who i am no that's another song that's another song yeah that's another okay. song this is a way make a way make a was way after i know who i am okay yeah, we look for it and put it in the show notes we should we should yes okay yeah. yes you're saying your your second artist is a local of course mm-hmm. even the local artists they really inspire me uh, my favorite 
my favorite local artist passed on a few <laughs> a few years ago and his name was John De Matthew. <coughs> I grew up listening to John and I grew up listening to John because my grandfather used to listen to his songs from morning to evening. So us guys were forced to listen to those songs. He would sing one song and the whole community goes berserk. John De Matthew. John De Matthew. Yes, yes, John De Matthew. And any song, name of the songs you recommend? From him? Yes. I think um, his most, the song I used to love most from him is one he advises young men. It's in, it's in parables. I've just come to understand it as a grown-up. I didn't know what to do. I liked the relics and uh, how it sounded. But I've j I just understood it as a real grown-up that he, he advises young men to take care when, when choosing a girl, not to take their mother, not to take the girl to, you know, home to see mom. Thinking they are taking mom gold, then they just find they are taking mom a big fat toad. <laughs> like that person you have not known who they are. You know? Those were his exact words. It's a big fat toad. You are taking your mom. You can imagine how scared the mom <laughs> will get. Because mom is wise and mom can see through the you know, mom can see through the, the the eyes. She can see whether you come dressed in kitenge or whatever. Your mother can see through a lot of things. So he was saying, please, my brother, take care. You don't cheat. You don't lie to yourself that you're taking your mom some good gold, yet you're going to scare her. Yeah, And she's going to die because... She just she knows the sun is is it's over for him. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to respect him so much because he advised us growing up. He advised the Kikuyu nation big time. He did. He did. Okay. Any uh, once once, song? once when I want to break some sweat, I I will dance to a little. I love Nigerian music. I'm sorry. I I love Nigerian music. Oh, you don't have to be sorry. <laughs> Yeah, you know, some Kenyans might think, oh, but I love the way they sit down, they compose their music, they take time, they give us good relics, and and, and we are able to, I mean, sometimes we don't even understand what, what music is all about, but I love dancing to Nigerian Afrobeats. Mm -hmm. they, they make my day. Any they artists in day. particular? Uh, I think he's called King Promise. The latest one I dance with my sons, it's called Terminator. So, and I'm unavailable. By <laughs> anyone wanting to pick my brain for free? Yes, by that David. That's, yeah, the, that's the hottest song right unavailable. now. Unavailable. <laughs> it's the hottest. All right, all right. Yeah. Um, I'd like to ask this question: mm. If time, money, and distance were not a factor. Mm. Which three people would you love to collaborate with on a project? On Since a project. you do coaching, creating stuff, mm. who would you love to work with? If death, mm. time, and distance are not a factor, you could collaborate with someone who's passed on, mm -hmm. you know, someone maybe you've read their books and you've always wanted, you know. Mm. To collaborate yes, with? Yes, three people. Three people. Um, one is Tony Robbins. Tony has really influenced my life in a big way. It's that guy who, who, it is possible. You can dream and you can actually go out and, and make sure that those dreams are happening. If distance was not, uh, distance and access was not a problem, I, I would wish that we, we can do something together. I'm trying to look for um, I loved Whitney Houston. I can't still believe that her beautiful voice is gone and gone forever. When I was a young girl, at some point I thought I would become 
I would compose gospel songs and sing them. But I think, and I actually wrote gospel. If you're in high school with me, you know that I wrote gospel music, a lot of it. I had a whole book full of songs that I composed. Most in Swahili, some in Kikuyu. I don't even remember if I did any in English, but maybe I did. Unfortunately, I think the, um, the force started to drive me away from my studies. And since it's the parents' responsibility to ensure that they, they are watching the child and bringing them back to the fold, I performed very badly that time. I composed a lot of music. I sang it. I, I think I was crazy. I wanted to be a gospel musician badly. So I go home and my mom ramages. I mean, a parent is brilliant. She knows there must be something behind this performance. Either a boyfriend or something you are doing in school. But she knew me. She knew that boyfriend side most likely no. I was not the one doing that. So she knew it was something else. So she gets into my bags. She comes across this big fat book full of music she's like who wrote this music who is it for first the relics were so good she actually thought i was copying music from girls from some places you know the way we would copy music i wanted to have the music she's like you've been copying music i'm like no mom i've been composing the music she's like no she couldn't believe it so i don't know what happened to that book she took it she took it. So maybe my dream, I would have um, <laughs> fulfilled it with Whitney Houston. I am not very sure. Maybe. But she's a figure that influenced my life. In that, <clears throat> I mean, she created good music. Really, really, really good. Really, really good. The other person I would like to meet and do a project together. Living is, I would like to meet Lisa again, this time doing a project together. I don't know how those doors will open, mm -hmm. but I know they will at some point. All right. Wow. Wow. Those are very uh, powerful. And yes, please, uh, in the comment section, if you are in high school with Betty, did she <laughs> write? We need evidence. Ask my you know? desk mate. People just say, hey, Desky, is that true? Please mm -hmm. let us know. Yeah. Were those lyrics any good? <laughs> mm -hmm. I didn't sing them because I was very shy, but definitely I wrote them. Yeah. But I sang for them Mashairi so they knew. Yes, yes. Yeah. And yes, even as we wind up... Um, You've 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 shared a lot of powerful stories that can that transform lives. Mm. And how can someone get in touch with you so that we can go through this, you know? You said first four steps and then you said the additional two steps now. Wow. So how can how can people get in touch with you, whether it's social media, uh, you know? Uh getting in touch with you with your training programs or do you have something where people meet up what's going on andrew thank you very much for that question i have presence on social media um i have a linkedin account coach betty Mora, twitter coach betty Mora. oh it's x coach betty Mora. <laughs> i'm on um, facebook as uh, coach betty Mora, and my personal profile is betty Mora. i have an email address uh, a short one, you can write to me at uh, info at betma.com. Betma is B E T M A -E H dot com. But uh, also feel free to reach out to me on socials. It's now almost official that we can do this on social media. I don't mind. You can drop me an inbox. You can DM me on LinkedIn or uh, Twitter. I mean, you can connect. And by the way, you mentioned the last two steps that we have come up with. The need to come up with the last two steps was because I've, exp I've experienced this from clients. There are different questions they are asking me. And I've realized that we now need to go a step further and show them how to market their businesses. 
after marketing them, they also need to sell their businesses. And one way of selling their knowledge, not businesses, knowledge. We've helped them to do the four steps. Now we want to introduce two more steps that enable them to market and sell and monetize finally. Like hear money in the bank, see the message that says you've got some money in the account. And before we sign off, please tell us the story of how this man paid you money just because you spoke about Andrew, the power of your father's you positive influence. Did you have to bring influence. that? Yes. Yeah, no, yes. you know, that's, that's a bit personal. No, anyway. Just, just, yes, that's powerful. Your dad has influenced me just by what you're sharing. Oh, he has. Yes. I'll talk to him about I'll tell him, I'll tell him. You, I might bring my dad to the event, actually. You have to. Yes, I have to. We'll meet him. So um, one day I share, I put my dad's photo on, on Facebook and I say, I'm going home to see this. I was going home to see him. He was feeling unwell. So I was going to, to, to stay with him that day. And it was his birthday. So I was carrying cake and going to the village to see my dad. So I just decided to put up a post that day. Not a very serious post. Just to celebrate my dad and celebrate his birthday. And ask my friends to help me celebrate my dad's birthday. And when I went home, I showed him. You see, dad, my friends are wishing you happy birthday. So I think one man, I don't know what touched him, but he went into inbox. I didn't actually connect it to the post. He said, hi, Betty, how are you? What's your phone number? Because of my nature of business, people ask me for my phone number. The very serious ones go straight, ask for my phone number, and then they present their case. Then, of course, there are those jokers of hi, Betty, hi, hi, hi. The whole year they are telling you hi. So I know the serious ones. So he says, what's your phone number? I give the office number. So I, I you know, as I run my day, uh, the person handling the phone tells me, Coach Betty, there's some amount that came to the phone. What is it for? I ask from who? So I get the name. I actually just couldn't connect. I hadn't connected who it was. So I asked the person, please call the client, ask what, what service were they paying for? Because we didn't have an event going on. So he calls the, calls the client and the client says, I thought this was Coach Betty's number. And, uh, you know, they explain and he insists he wants to talk to me. So he's put through to me and says, Coach Betty, I know you don't know me, but I just wanted to say thank you very much for praising your dad. A lot of people don't praise men. No, no, he said a lot of women don't praise men publicly but you did for me i didn't think it was anything so big so i asked what is the money for and he said just go have lunch i just felt appreciated on his behalf so i don't know his story i don't know if he has a daughter who he has influenced but that's what happened Wow, so the lesson uh, I hear is please say positive things about the people in your life. You just <laughs> never know whose yeah. life it might touch out there. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Betty, for embracing the podcast. You know, you would have been a, a, a blossoming uh, singer-songwriter, but those dreams were dashed. Yeah. But uh, we're glad that you're showing us how we can make money from our professional expertise I hope you've uh, gotten value from this podcast. If you have, please just do share one thought that you've gotten from this that has just tickled your brain, you know, giving you that aha moment. Please just share it in the comments below or on Twitter on your favorite platform where you're listening or watching this. We'd like that so that I can share with Betty her impact. You, know, you don't have to send her money like that man did, but hey, your I comments are just <laughs> as powerful. Yeah. So thank you for tuning in to the Revenge of the Forsaken Gods. Go forth and live your best life. Till next week. Bye-bye. My name is Coach Betty, and you are listening or watching the Revenge of the Forsaken Gods podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Keep listening for more inspirational stories.